This is the sportiest Audi A6 in this new generation. Welcome to a full review of the Audi RS6 Avant. Here on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. In exterior, interior and the performance driving experience, you'll surely enjoy it in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Here in the front we can see a menacing style, the RS6 here gets the dark front grille, high gloss black and with a honeycomb structure, also stronger lower bumper and the air intakes right here, then the vertical element as a contrast, so Daytona grey is the color for today. Then it starts automatically with LED headlamps and usually for an A6 there would be a second step with the matrix LED, but here the RS6 exclusively for the A6 model range gets the matrix laser lights and then directly over jumps this, the, this matrix step, so either base LED or then optional, the laser lights right here, you can see the blue accentuations and of course a very interesting and strong daytime running light signature right there. Strong also the accentuations on the hood and you can already see from the front that the wheel arches, both front and the rear, you can see the, <laughs> I've seen the cascading turning indicators. So the wheel arches, both front and rear, are actually about four centimeters or one and a half inches wider for a stronger stance on the road. Due to stronger spoiler overhangs, the RS models are a little bit longer, five meters, 16 foot four or 197 inches. You can all see the very strong spoilers here, both front and the rear. The wheels come with 21 inch as standard for the RS6 and optional, you can see them here, 22 inch. And another option are these ceramic brakes. They of course help to keep the wheels cleaner if they're really necessary. Well, not really. I like the contrast here in the bright style. You can also get a night or dark package. Yeah, the manufacturers always name it differently than everything would be black here, but I think it's a really cool contrast to the Daytona Grey. You always saw that the car sits lower. It comes standard with the air suspension and then it sits 20 millimeters lower actually and when you're driving faster than 120 kilometers an hour or faster than 70 miles an hour it goes 10 millimeters even lower so further so it really looks way smaller than a normal a6 and again with the wider wheel arches also in the front and in the rear what a cool strong look for an estate isn't it you can also, by the way, go for the DRC, that's a dynamic ride control. It's a fixed suspension, but then with three different settings you can preset. But this will, of course, reduce the comfort only if you really want a very, very stiff ride. As for the design here in the rear, you can see beautiful rear signature, RS6 badge. Then again, the bright contrast here in a swinging style. Well, I think this is really a very good design job, but what's your take on that? We have the black stripe that goes all over the vehicle and then the exhaust. No job for the fake exhaust police today because this is actually real. I mean the outer tip of the really large but the rear ones on the inside so it's no fake and it standardly comes with a sport exhaust and this one in here with the black frame. There you can see that this is the optional sports exhaust. Of course here in Europe it will not sound that loud as we are used to in the US version because of the particle filters. An interesting option here for the rear axle, a rear differential lock and also the rear axle steering together in the dynamic pack for 
12,000 euros. And here, this is the 4-liter TFSI V8 bi-turbo, now with a mild hybrid system, 600 horsepower, 3.6 seconds to 1 km an hour and 12 seconds to 200 km an hour, respectively, you know, somewhat equal figures to 60 miles an hour or 125 miles an hour. And the classic all-wheel drive system, the Quattro 40% in the front, 60% torque in the rear, up to 70% in the front of the power or 85% in the rear. It varies then depending on the situation, but always rear wheel biased. First is door closing sound, mm, solid. Then let's check out the interior together. You can see here a beautiful job at the inside of the doors with these sporty inserts and also galvanized buttons everywhere for the window levers and so on. RS6 entry batch, aluminum pedals. Then you can see here some more of the deco elements, digital instruments, virtual cockpit. Here from the optional Bang & Olufsen sound system. Really cool, 6,000 euros extra, ooh, yeah, that's tough. Then the steering wheel perforated and also flat bottom. These sport seats here are standard. These are the RS seats with integrated head restraint. The one with separated head restraint that are available for the normal A6 would be a little bit more comfortable. However, here they want to go for the more striking visual solution. In Europe, the inserts here would also be Alcantara. That is of course better because it keeps you cooler in summer, warm in winter and also you don't slide on that that much. Sadly in the US and here also the option for Europe is with animal skin full and that's of course ignorant towards the animal lives and also the demands of the customers nowadays. Well, but Audi really lags behind as for this. And now let's get inside. Indeed you realize that it sits lower than the usual A6. But still, you know, from the seat form, you find a decent position here. When you close the door, by the way, there's this automatic comfort feature that the seat slides forward again and the steering wheel comes down. Here it came up and the seat came back a little bit. It's a good comfort feature. Option, you can, by the way, also go for a comfort seat, let's say a downgrade, so to say. Um, in Europe, I would definitely stick with this sport seat because at least you can get Alcantara in the middle. In the US, it then again doesn't matter because both seats are animal skin only. Then you could also go for the comfort seat and have a little bit more comfort, a little bit more room to move around. They will be more comfortable than the more, you know, cage in sport seats, although they of course look better from the form. Other than that, put the seat in the lowest position, Alcantara ceiling, no panoramic roof in this car here, a lot of headroom left with 1m86 or 6 foot one Optional, there is of course also a panoramic roof available. Steering wheel has electric function right here. You can also adjust it then very well to your position and in the front you definitely have enough room to move around. So the standard setup for the RS6 is 12.3 inch digital instruments left or virtual cockpit, 10.1 inch main infotainment screen and the lower one then is 8.6 inch and they also play together soon more to that. Quattro logo right here will be illuminated with the ambient lighting. This huge tablet right there, it does squeak from time to time when it changes the temperature, like once, not always, and then it's like okay until the temperature changes again. Everything is very well built, but that's the only flaw I could actually, you cannot really very well induce that. Actually, maybe here yeah. a little bit, but again, when it not touches, usually just influenced by temperature change. Then a very clean look here on the top part. Also here, everything really cleaned up, hardly any buttons left because of the touchscreen controls, but it's actually quite easy to control. Soon more to these screens and also the instruments. Here are the steering wheel, the voice control, then you have the RS mode button where you can individualize two different RS modes. You can easily switch them while driving actually. And on the left side, the view for the virtual instruments and also to control them right here with your left thumb. Interesting shifting pedals we have here also at the steering wheel. And then in the lower area, we have a start-stop engine button. 
then there are adaptive cup holders hidden right here. Automatic converter gearbox lever, electric handbrake, and then to connect your smartphones, there's an inductive charging pad, but then also two USB-A supplies. And then a look at the virtual cockpit right here. Looks pretty amazing, has a special sports layout here for the RS6, and when you activate the RS1 or RS2 modes, then you can also see the changes here, for example, also that the stability control is being changed. However, we can also change something of the view here, make it differently right there, and we can also change of what we want to see, for example, also, yeah, go full screen with the map. And now details to the screens. So the menu structure is really easy to use, one of the best softwares there is, and there's also a strong processor unit behind it so that everything you do is actually really, really fast. Even here in this satellite view, which you can also deactivate to make it even faster or, you know, as for the better overview, for example. But here, you don't need so many different menu stuff. You can easily find almost everything. Here at car, you can, for example, then pick the Audi Drive Select for the air suspension. It goes down then, for example, in dynamic mode. And, you know, that also shows in the race or lower. And here, then, the RS modes, you can pick them and also individualize them. For example, RS mode 1, then some are still balanced and then for example iris mode 2 you can set that, that everything is on the sportiest setting that probably makes most sense in this case then apple carplay you can see here it's a great song and integrated all over the screen and this optional b and o sound system is i mean it's really amazing so let's listen to that wow what a rich and true sound really cool also check out the sound settings here, settings and sound. Here, yeah, my tip is surround level, max it all out, yeah. And then there's also this lower screen here for the climate control. You swipe here, for example, for the temperature. You get used to it a little bit. For a touchscreen solution, it's actually quite okay to change temperature also while driving and also to change the vent strength and where they're coming from. So here the seat ventilation can also be accessed here in the heated seats and yeah i think it's quite okay although manual climate notes are always cooler i think and the screen also plays together for example when entering gps address so when you search something then you can write here for example you see like you know london or something um, but you can also just oh, use the typical oh, keyboard layout and of course also the voice input if you want to put in a GPS address or what would also be possible I think you need to turn on the car for that change temperature to 22 degrees I'll increase the temperature there it is degrees. so that's also helpful definitely and last but not least the camera here is the rear view camera and also a drone view from above so you can also switch these camera modes around. There's also the 3D view available. Yeah, there we go. Kick ass. Are these our alloys? I think so, right? Are they? I think so. And also, well, somewhat our color as well. Pretty impressive. And always a nice feature. Elegant, this frameless rear mirror. Oh, and did I mention that I really love this Alcantara ceiling? I mean, I like panoramic roofs, but when it's all covered here in the microfiber, also pretty cozy and sporty. Here we go with the rear, by the way, at the doors here, you have these manual shades available and then also soft touch here at the inside of the doors, nice decor element, it's a matte decor by the way, pretty cool. Legroom here, plenty of space available, no problem, definitely, also with these gaps here, the recess at the back part of the seat, and yeah, I mean, decent seating position here, headroom is also plentiful, no problem as for that. And of course, the advantage here, the avant towards the sedan, is that also when you lean backwards, you have more than enough headroom. You have a sophisticated rear console here with climate unit, USB-A supplies and so on. A huge all-wheel drive middle tunnel, therefore it is somewhat a problem to sit in the middle seat, but I mean, yeah, it's still okay, but pretty stiff also from the bolt string here. It fits for five tall adults, even though it's of course not most comfortable. Isofix outside parts right there. You can already flip the seats from here if you like. And then this middle armrest right there does include adaptive cup holders and also a ski hatch if you just want to flip the very middle part. 
So the strong area, 565 up to 1680 liters. You can see here how it works with the luggage. Of course, also in a vertical way, no problem. Then this lower part here, just some small storage underneath. What's really cool is that this top cover here automatically goes down when the hatch is closed and goes up when it's open. That's a flawless solution. Then we can flip the seats also from here, one third, two shot split. But let me give you some measurements right here. This is more than a meter actually in width. The normal length of the trunk here is almost one meters 20 and the height up till the cover is about 40 centimeters and the total height here about 75 centimeters well then let's flip the second half as well here we go and this is also a good solution that it really directly flips when you just use these handles there so or folds it folds down yes thank you <laughs> two meters here in length, totally to my seat. So to open the hatch, you can use the key fob, press twice, you can press here below the Audi logo, or there's also this foot kick opening mechanism. And I'm not really sure, so you have to swipe under the car and then it works. That's actually quite good solution. Here again, you see that this one no, slides up and down again. But then again, when you're standing here, you can either close it here, but sometimes you want to do something and then you're standing here like, like this and your feet are maybe under the vehicle or you swiped in here. And quite often it already happened that, you know, we have with two people or something and then suddenly that hatch closes because the sensor in the lower part got your signal and then it really hits you on the head. And that's of course a problem. So I'm not sure if I would go for this function and the child safety test. Yeah, it's not too sensitive, but still okay. Welcome to Thomas's active driving lounge with the Audi RS6. And we'll go directly to the German Autobahn, yes. <laughs> and we'll put it to the RS mode. I also put the RS2 mode, so the sportier setting that's available. It's dry road, that's why I can do that. Otherwise, you shouldn't actually. And we'll start at about 40 kilometers an hour and let's go. That's over 200 kilometers an hour, over 125 miles an hour. Wow, impressive how smooth the car did that with the all-wheel drive, rear-wheel biased all-wheel drive. Also with this RS Dynamic Pack we have here, not only the rear axle steering, but also the rear diff sport differential. Wow, amazing. And look at that, I mean, how silent the car is here at 160 kilometers an hour. Look at that lane change now, high-speed lane change. It's like nothing for the vehicle, remains so calm, yes, quite stiff, okay, you know, it is stiffer from the air suspension here in that sporty version, also the 22-inch wheels make it definitely stiffer, yet again, still comfortable when the road is, you know, quite even now on the brakes, you really have to give them some push, definitely, but very good braking performance, no doubt about that, wow, pretty cool, and I mean, how agile this car is, it's a really, you know, it's a, it's a full-size vehicle and the steering input here is so precise, there's no dead zone area, it's pretty light to steer, yes, even in that sport mode, a little bit stiffer, a little bit more resistance in the sporty modes, you can also individualize that, yet again, I mean, it's like, it's really cool, you don't need any, um, you know, long steering ways, so everything can be done without putting the hands off the steering wheel. And that's of course also, um, you know, safety relevant, definitely. So what about here in the tunnel? Let's lower the window. Yeah, I mean, since the, um, you know, newest filters and so on, the sound has been decreased no doubt about that and there is this sport exhaust here in this vehicle this is you know you always get a sports exhaust yeah but then the optional sport exhaust is also equipped with this car and it's really not too loud then again i mean yeah you can always ask yourself how necessary is it 
of course when we drive the car ourselves if they're like oh it's a cool sound and it's more emotional it's cool and so on and therefore also manufacturers increase the sound that comes to the interior of the car with these sound actuators even with strong performance vehicles almost every car nowadays has that yet again when you're on the outside and then you might do, do something else at the moment you think like yeah what's that guy doing there can't it be like more silent so always matter of perspective really impressed of how sovereign this car sits on the road oh, there's an m5 in front of us so yeah the steering is just flawless really cool what a great feeling <laughs> this guy of course was looking over like what's that oh that's a challenge to us <laughs> yeah, um, definitely same segment, although we are of course here in the estate and BMW decides to do these performance vehicles sedan only. You see it also in this left corner. I mean, look at that here, steering exactly as the corner is, like 90 degrees, a 90 degrees turn of the steering, it's really cool. And although it is no, not a small car at all. It feels smaller and more agile due to rear axle steering. That's very important. And of course, it's rather stiff setup. Really, really very cool. Is it a huge difference to driving a normal A6? Well, the normal A6, especially if you have, then again, the rear axle steering already feels pretty agile. We have also a nice review on curvy roads in Portugal with the um, A6 sedan, with the normal, 3 liter TFSI petrol engine that was pretty cool however thing here is with the all-wheel drives here in the A6 the 3 liter TFSI V6 does have the Quattro Ultra so front plus rear in the all-wheel drive and here this one the big V8 4 liter and the 3 liter TDI the diesels have the classic 40-60 distribution front rear so rear wheel bias and then of course a little bit more varying than depending so you can get even more power to the rear wheels when you really accelerate out and of course also a little bit more power to the front wheels so very amazing also how silent this car was when we accelerated it out and even though you know yeah the road was dry and now it's starting to, to pick up the rain just a little bit but this all-wheel drive really got it very well to the ground all the power we have here from the 600 horsepower that was pretty cool and i think this car still somewhat gives you a compromise between sportiness and comfort. Um, the S6 does that better in a way, of course. Yet again, in Europe, only available as the diesel anymore. That 3-liter diesel is really a very good engine. It's mine. I mean, it's really efficient. So you've seen it in the A6 all-wheel review recently. You can drive it with a very low fuel consumption. That was pretty amazing. A good motor vehicle. It's probably a little bit different than here with this V8 petrol engine. So we have to be aware of that. Of course, this one here is more emotional because especially um, you don't have to wait that long till the power sets in. That's different with the diesel. There's a more spontaneous throttle input. Let's go to the RS mode once again. Here we can flow it out once more. Now already starting from about 85, 90 kilometers an hour. Let's go. Wow, that's 160 kilometers an hour, interesting. Now I'll turn off the RS mode just for safety precautions. Also, rain has picked up here once more, but even though it's raining, it's remaining perfectly silent in here and about 160 kilometers an hour. Wow, this car is sticking to the ground, definitely. The air suspension in the auto mode is more comfortable than it would be in the RS or dynamic mode, so it varies a little bit. Here at higher speeds, it's already going lower, 10 millimeters lower even than it usually would be. Lane change here, so easily done. Yeah, this is definitely one of the motorway cars overall. Pretty cool. And again, when I'm doing like a high speed lane change, how safe the car feels. Great in the handling. Very, very impressive. So, and I think the you know, the, the compromise between spoilers and comfort would be even a little bit better than with the 21 inch wheels. Of course, 20 inch wheels will even be better for the riding comfort, but they do not offer it with the RS model. They think then, yeah, let's leave that, you know, to the non-RS customers actually. Now saying the cruise control, 
100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour, which would be a suitable motorway speed on you know, a lot of different motorway parts. Now the road is uh, all dry again and super silent once more. It's very dark here in this interior with this dark Alcantara ceiling, definitely. Yeah, the lane keeping assist is also working, but I can also deactivate it if I just want to steer my, on my own and just let the speed you know, be ruled by the ACC, the adaptive cruise control. So, it's pretty impressed. It's not that you need a secondary vehicle, you can drive it as your primary vehicle, of course. Um, then suspension and wheel choice will be important. Shifting down yourself is always very cool, not only when going downhill, of course, also when going uphill. Here then also appears M mode in the middle display. Special shifting levers, also shown in that earlier, here for the RS model with the gap right here. So everything you touch and feel is very good. Just sometimes, mentioned in the interior part, this, you know, big middle console here, the top part, when there are some you know, notable temperature changes throughout the day, throughout driving. It tends to make like a rattling noise sometimes, like, like, my, like, because the material is just working, so much material working there, but that's not like all the time. It's like once when it adapts to a new temperature or something, and then it's gone again, like for next hour or something. So it's nothing, I mean, I've also spent in the A6 all road like hours and hours and hours on motorways, nothing which you would be like disturbed with and you can only hear it when you don't have the music on, for example. So, but of course we also want to mention the weaknesses of every vehicle here on Auto Control. So, very interesting ride here today with the Audi R6. One more slalom before <laughs> we go to a little bit. This is so awesome. So it's one of the cars in this segment where this doing the slalom makes most fun. Yeah, and then to some city driving. So, and what you can easily do here always is when you're just in the normal driving mode and you don't want to switch like to an RS mode inside the city, but say, oh, traffic light will jump to green. I need like some punch to get away first from all the other vehicles and just pull this shifting lever backwards and go from the D to the S shifting mode that goes a gear lower, turns up the gears higher than, shifts later or up, shifts earlier down, and then you're already a little bit sporty because the base setup of this car is of course already sporty. Air suspension here 20 millimeters lower as usual and I do feel that really sitting a little bit lower but the main difference you feel here suspension wise because the air suspension is really good is more about the wheel choice because standard 21 inch and then optional 22 inch wheels we have here today and these really reduce the comfort and we have a very good comparison because just recently we had that Audi A6 all road which is then you know, was equipped with 20 inch wheels and that was still a quite good compromise. Oh, Toyota I go racing here. Obviously, he wants to lose the driver's license. <laughs> um, yeah, we always obey speed limits, even with fast cars, because we still need our driver's license. So, yeah, back to the air suspension and the wheel choice. So, if you go for the RS model here, definitely do not upgrade to the 22 inch wheels. Yes, they really look amazing but they reduce the comfort even further. And when I'm here now, like the road is not that well done, uh, has some bumps, some damages in it, then all the time, like, sound-wise, and also you feel that, that's really not too good. And this also is decreasing then the comfort of the air suspension. And I would also advise you not to go for the DRC, this dynamic ride control, where you have a fixed suspension, but then, you know, so it's not adaptive, but you can still set three different presets, so to say. But that's a different then because um, the adaptive suspension is always adaptive. Even if you set a preset, then the adaptive suspension is like inside a preset ruling, you know, plus and minus and adapting to the situation. But the fixed suspension has three presets and is not adaptive in these presets. Yeah, a little bit complicated, but I hope you, you got what I mean. So, but this adaptive suspension here, which is the air suspension, this is the standard one for the RS6 and you should also stay with that one 
it's sporty enough, yet at the same time it offers you more comfort and also more flexibility. So I told you that it's 20 millimeters lower and if you drive faster than 120 kilometers an hour, so faster than about 70 miles an hour, then it will lower the vehicle even further on 10 millimeters. So you have you know, better uh, wind efficiency and also you know, a lower, stiffer ride once again. And also here happening in the dynamic mode, for example. Um, if I'm going to the efficiency mode, by the way, I can more maybe stress this MHEV feature of the engine, but yeah, does it make too much of a difference? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Um, mild hybrid systems can work pretty well, yes, but here with the 4 liter V8 bi turbo, we cannot really expect low fuel consumptions. I mean, no one is expected with this vehicle anyway, but I mean, from time to time, we do have performance vehicles which are pretty good in the fuel consumption so um, it does happen from time to time definitely so going back into the auto mode and well during the driving in the city steering also helps you very direct and precise parking in and out and of course the rear axle steering is amazing which is included in this dynamic package for 12,000 euros extra aye, aye, aye. <laughs> so but this is really cool because the car feels smaller than it actually is. Remember, the rear axle steering fakes, so to say, a shorter wheelbase because it turns in the opposite direction at slow speeds, and then in the same direction at higher speeds for more stability. And that's really an awesome drive and also helps you when uh, parking in and out, for example. So, um, yeah, I think you should, should, should go for that. Of course, it's then again, uh, yeah, again, very pricey extra once more. <laughs> the B&O sound system we heard all earlier is really good, but yeah, 6,000 euros extra for that is also something tough to swallow, definitely. So when you ask me, difference now, the A6 all road and this one here, yeah, you sit lower and definitely the suspension is stiffer by that also, but I think the biggest choice you feel while driving, really the wheel choice, this makes the biggest difference rather than in the air suspension because you feel that these bumps are collected by the tires and not necessarily by the suspension. Other than that, you can also drive this car in a relaxed manner. Again, the noise insulation is really superb. Also heard that earlier when we drive very fast on the motorway, so this is really fine. No problems with that. The overview, well, it's the estate vehicle, so can't complain about that. Considering the you know, grown-up size of this vehicle, I really have a good overview. So, would I go for the A6 Allroad or for the RS6 Avant? Definitely the A6 Allroad is the better choice as for price performance and also as for the comfort. This in here, of course, the sportier choice. However, the engine is remaining rather calm here in the normal driving mode and also when you're not really pushing the throttle. So you can, even if you have that optional sports exhaust we have here, you can drive it, let's say, neighbor compliant. <laughs> so that is actually possible. Yeah. And the lowest fuel consumption we could score is actually about nine liters and one kilometers. That is possible somewhat. So um, it's like, I think 26 mbg US, 31 mbg UK. But that would be if you really not use the power this car has to offer. So minimum, minimum, minimum. Rather um, a high-speed motorway, but constantly more than, yeah, let's say towards, <laughs> sorry about that. So, um, yeah, rather more than towards um, like 12 liters on one kilometers and yeah, then you rather get into 20 something mpg regions. Uh, that, that, I mean, it's still somewhat okay for a high performance vehicle, I think. So um, we've experienced worth for sure. So here now a little bit um, slower speed on the motorway. What about the assistance systems? You can also pack it full of assistance systems, of course. Blind spot monitor is inside this side mirror. That's a very good one, definitely. 
then we have the cruise control right here steering wheel you can increase or decrease the speed with a separate column and then you can activate the lane keeping assist here with the separate column here where you have the turning indicators as well and you can activate or deactivate them and depending on the A6 version you also have this um, let's say even more active system that is really actively keeping you in the lane so there are different build types of you know how the assistance systems work and you can also change the driver axis here for example maximum individual or basic so depending on what you have in your vehicle then you can also adapt it of how much they shall rule and so far I found also the lane keeping assist quite inintrusive so I think it's very important we have some vehicles where it's like I need to turn this off this is so annoying but here I think is a job well done and here you can see even in the construction site here where it's not very clear for the car oh there's an e-tron um, and the Arteon also see that um, not that often actually Arteon facelift of course recently that coverage yeah here I think I, I'm not sure if I needed to help there but you see the car is being kept in the lane quite efficiently yeah I mean I wouldn't always 100% trust on that for sure that's also not how it's meant to be yet but then again so far the assistance systems tests here in a very good performance for the R&D RS6 and in general with the all the MLB platform the big Audi vehicles so far very good experience with all these assistance systems right there and here when the motorway is well prepped then you know you don't feel so much of these bigger bigger wheels then again it might be an advantage that you have just you know, a little bit more sporty feeling when being here on the road and then it's of course yeah one of the very best motorway vehicles definitely also maybe for longer term however the um, you know the, the sport seats here with the integrated head restraint and of course especially when you have the animal skin surface they are less comfortable than if you would have fabric or alcantara surface because it's just stiffer from the surface and these you know really depends on you know which seat you like best i prefer that one we had in the a6 all road for example um, sometimes we have it that sporter seats are more comfortable um, it really depends on the vehicle then depends on the individual seat so these are some let's say no more normal impressions from the RS6 and now to the conclusion for today with the new Audi RS6 Avant well we promised to you that we can review both the US available versions the RS6 Avant and the A6 Allroad we did that so you can also check out the A6 Allroad review we will link it in the video description and also in the pinned comment again these two versions here of the Avant A6 are available also for the Northern American market of course a very aggressive styling but yet I think it's still you know elegant so it really works looks quite cool one of the most striking estate cars out there I think what's your take on that the interior with a high build quality that's really awesome I think for a touchscreen it's also quite well to use still however in the high trims or special also on the US market the animal skin alternatives are missing and especially in a sporty vehicle we need fabric in Alcantara to make it a sportier and of course also more sustainable the space you have inside of course you have enough of that can use it as a primary vehicle and driving wise wow i mean it's so agile although it's a huge vehicle especially when you pick that rear axle suspension that makes it so much more agile with the 22 inch wheels it gets bumpy from time to time yes still there is some kind of a compromise between sportiness and comfort even better than with the 21 inch wheels and you should also stick with the air suspension and not go for the optional drc which makes it even stiffer or rougher overall very striking autobahn experience for sure thank you so much for tuning in today also tune into the competitor vehicles or the a6 all road see you there